Hey guys, it's Otherwise Help here. Welcome back to the channel. And interesting move today by Apple releasing iOS 15.3. RC or release candidate. Now, for those of you that do not know, the release candidate is the software that's released to developers and public beta testers before the software is pushed out to the general public within a week time frame or so, which is quite interesting because iOS 15.3 does not contain any major new features and changes. But of course, in this video, we're going to go over anything and everything that's new with the latest iOS 15.3. Now, as always, if you would like to stay up today with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode. Now, aside from iOS 15.3 RC being released today, Apple has also updated all their other platforms as per usual. Mac OS 12.2 RC has been released today for registered developers and public beta testers alike. Now, as I mentioned, iOS 15.3 RC is out. Of course, iPadOS 15.3 RC has been released as well. WatchOS 8.4 RC and, of course, tvOS 15.3 RC is now available for registered developers and public beta testers alike. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the actual file size because this is an indicator of the release candidate. We see here about five to six gigabytes of a download. As I always say, this is simply overwriting the entire OS to install a fresh new version of iOS 15.3 on your devices. So if you're a developer or a public beta tester, you should see this software populate for you here in the next couple of hours. If not already, you can check by heading over into settings, of course, general and the about section. And we take a look here at the build number. There it is. We have 15.3. The RC will be 19D49. So this is pretty much the official final release. Now, Apple has before released uh, RC2 in the past for minor bugs and last minute fixes. Well, we'll have to wait and see what Apple will do with 15.3. We can expect this software to be releasing to the general public here in just about a week or so. But before we get to one of the changes with this software, I also want to quickly talk about iOS 14. Yes, iOS 14, the software that many users continue to run on their iPhones. If you're running iOS 14.3, 14.4, 14.8, any iOS 14 point update, Apple is no longer allowing users to stay in iOS 14, but you would rather have to update to iOS 15. Now, Apple themselves has already expressed that this was a temporary move for users to stay in iOS 14 if they didn't want to update to iOS 15 while still receiving security patches and Apple will still have the time to fix any bugs within iOS 15 in order to have those users within iOS 14 finally update to iOS 15. In this case, 15.3 now marks the end of that where you can stay in iOS 14 while still receive security patches. Again, Apple has mentioned that this was temporary. So if you have an iOS 14 device and you're looking to update to iOS 15, honestly, 15.3 is a solid update. And let's talk about some of the changes here. Now, as I mentioned, iOS 15.3 contains one change here, and in my opinion, is an important move by Apple here. So with Private Relay, Apple has now this new prompt that allows you to know if your carrier does not support this or they actually disable this feature on your end. And of course, Private Relay remains in beta under iCloud settings here. If we go to Private Relay, you can see here that Private Relay obviously hides your IP address and browser activity in Safari for unencrypted web traffic. Of course, not even Apple can see who you are and what you're doing online. So Private Relay really protects your uh, internet activity, right? And that way it can protect you uh, even further by hiding your IP address. Apple has now added the ability for, uh, for your iPhone to notify you if your carriers does not support this or if your carrier actually disabled this functionality on their end. And that's one of the major changes with iOS 15.3. Honestly, there really isn't a whole lot more to talk about with this software other than expect a release date, right? Now, I thought this software will remain in beta for the next month or so, but wow, am I surprised to see that Apple has already pushed the RC. It's kind of interesting how Apple is working nowadays with the software releases and beta releases. We just saw iOS 15.2.1 being released to address a few bugs, and not to say that this is a bad thing, right? Apple continues to stay on top of their game, patching security flaws and things like that, but just a lot of software releases here in the past uh, several weeks 
weeks, right? We did get a three weeks break, but now we just get back to back software and uh, expect a release date for the software. If history is any indication, keep in mind, Apple's uh, release patterns has really changed over the past several months. Uh, this software could be released to the general public as early as the week of the 24th and next week by the end of January, which is surprising to me. Obviously, we will most likely see another beta on top of that after the official release of this software. Apple continues to test software and beta software as soon as they release new updates as iOS 15.3 lingers here in the next couple of days. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, stay tuned here to the channel for more follow-up updates in terms of battery performance and anything else I come across within iOS 15.3 that should be dropping in the next couple of days alongside the final review. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.